Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Good to see every one of you. Good to see Brother Sunny back in church. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Victory wasn't well. She fell. Amen. And she was in a bit of pain. We're taking her to the doctor. Amen. So we'll remember her in prayer. How many of you like uh, Wednesday night prayer meetings? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Jaffa's not here. He's got the flu. Amen. Hallelujah. And his mom's still in hospital, Brother Sister. Okay, so Swasodi was admitted to hospital. Amen. Hallelujah. Sugar levels are high. Amen. So we'll pray that the Lord will Amen. touch them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's turn to our Bibles, Ephesians chapter 1. We'll read from verse 17. 16, 17, somewhere around there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's read from verse 15. It says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him Amen. the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and amen. what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints amen you may be seated praise the lord amen, amen. so the spirit of wisdom has come in this time amen, amen. the spirit of wisdom has come Amen. Amen. It's come to help us in the place of our trying. Amen. 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 The bride is fixing to go through a greatest trial, yes. a greatest test. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. You remember the prophet is teaching us the word is in the bride. Yes. If you type that quote up, you can find it. Yes. Amen. He says, as it was in Mary, the word is in the bride. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, a lot of message people walking the face of the earth, we don't dispute them that the word is in them. But what we need to look for is the word quickened in them. Amen. Amen. The word must become quickened. Amen. That is what we are talking about, the dynamics coming upon the word, which is the Holy Spirit here to quicken the word in us. Amen. Now, when we are going through trials and testings and the enemy is surrounding us, we have a choice to handle it with the five senses. Amen. We can either go carnal, amen, or we can choose to handle it with the word of God. Amen. And when the word of God is quickened to us, that is wisdom amen. to apply the word of God. Amen. Wisdom to apply the word of God. Amen. So you can now use the word to overcome our problems, our trials, and our situations. Amen. 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 So the word becomes alive to us. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't just rejoice in the revelations of it, but we are using the word in our daily lives Amen. to overcome. Amen. Now, most Christians have not come to that place yet because they don't know what to do with the word. No application of the word. Try to try to come panic, fear, anxiety, worry, depression. Amen. Don't know how to use the word. But the, the, the prophecy of us is the bride has the mind of Christ. She knows what to do with the word. Amen. 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 She knows how to apply the word. Yes. Amen. So the moment we find ourselves in anxiety, in tension, in stress, amen, getting depressed, that is us showing that we are not spiritually mature yet. Yes. We may have a, the word in us, but we don't know how to use the word. Yes. Amen. So we can use the word to overcome our situations. Amen. Word inside people. Amen. But when they face situations, they don't know how to use the word. When they face temptation, they fall because there is no present tense reality. The word is not alive. Amen. To tell them what to do. They got no guide. They got no teacher. They got no spirit of truth. Amen. Hallelujah. 
So having the word is one thing, but you need the guide. You need the teacher. You need the spirit of truth. Amen. To come and quicken that word to show you what to do with the word. Now the word can be in you, but you need the intelligence. Amen. Hallelujah. We know the Holy Spirit is the intelligence come to quicken that word. So we find out when we're speaking on Sunday on changing positions. And we find Jesus was walking on the earth for 30 years. And everybody knew him as the son of Joseph. Son of Joseph. Son of Mary. But God was going to change his position when he came to the Jordan River that day. Amen. God changed his position. God changed his title. Because the voice that came out of heaven said, This is my beloved son. Amen. Changing his position from earthly Joseph. That's what they thought his father was. But he came to give him his identity. Amen. 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 He changed Jesus' position to a heavenly place position. Yeah. To let him know he's not the son of the earth. Amen. Amen. He's the son of God. Amen. So Amen. remember, the Bible says immediately after the baptism, the spirit led him into the wilderness. Yes. For a place of trying. Yes. For a place of testing. Yes. Amen. Amen. He, needs, he needs to be tried. Because when you have the word in you, you are going to go through a test. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. God will try your faith. Yes. To see if you're a mature son. If you're a born son. If you're a trained son. Yes. Or will you just buckle under the pressure. So Jesus was tempted, went into the wilderness, but the Holy Spirit was there. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. Amen. <clears throat> now you may be thinking the Holy Spirit was not with him. The Bible says the fullness of the God had dwelt in Jesus bodily. Amen. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit was locked up in Jesus. Amen. Yes. So he was being led by the guide. He was being led by the Spirit of Truth. Amen. And the Spirit of Truth told him what to do with the Word. Amen. So every time Satan counted him and Satan went to the word. Yes. But remember the temptation was not for him to turn stone into bread. Yes. That's what it seems like. But what Satan was really attacking is a revelation of what he heard at the Jordan. Yes. That you are the son of God. Amen. Oh, yes. He was there to test him to see if this was truly the son of God. Because if you're really an adopted son, if you're really the Adam man on the earth, turning stone into bread is nothing. He was there to make him doubt that he was the son of God. He was there to make him doubt his position. And that's what Satan will come to make you do. Doubt your position. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus goes to the word to reestablish his position. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Hallelujah. So you can find that example of testing in Matthew chapter 4. Amen. Now, just to dwell on the scripture for a short time. Ephesians 1 verse 17. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you gold, silver. This is what Paul is praying for the Ephesians now. I pray that the Lord will bless you abundantly. I pray, amen, that the Lord will bless you in all things in diamonds. Not forgetting a million rand. But the apostle is saying, I do not stop praying, giving thanks for you. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you blessings and good health. <clears throat> good jobs, best jobs in Durban. What is he praying for? The spirit of wisdom. You need wisdom more than anything else. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because wisdom can go to work for you. Yes. Yes. Wisdom is the word applied. Yes. Yes. Wisdom is the problem solver. Yes. So he's asking for the spirit of wisdom. Yes. Who is he asking it for? A mature church. Yes. Yes. A church who's in the land. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So what is wisdom? When a person reads the Bible, we know that we are getting knowledge. But knowledge is not good enough. Anyone can read the Bible and attain knowledge. But the word does not make, that knowledge of the word does not make us successful. Does knowledge 
from the Bible give us victory? No. Knowledge is only showing us the theory part. That's where many people die. In the schools of denomination, in the schools, amen, Bible colleges and schools and seminaries. But <clears throat> Hebrews 4 verse 2, let's put it up, brother. Amen. Hebrews 4 verse 2 teaches us how to handle the word. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tonight might be a little practical, a practical look at the word to show us how to operate the word. Amen. amen. Hebrews 4 and 2, for unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. So the gospel is going into all the world. But the word preached did not profit them. So not everyone hearing the word, having the luxury of hearing the word, does it profit them. Why? Yes, why? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So hearing the word is one thing. But you've got to mix it with faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. You've you got to quicken it with faith. Amen. Because faith cometh by the hearing of the word. Yeah. Mix it with faith. Amen. One more scripture there. James 1 and 22 says. James 1 and 22. But be doers of the word. Yes. And not hearers only. Amen. If you only hear the word. What are you doing? You are in deception. We come to church week after week. We say, I love to hear the word. Deceiving ourselves. But be doers of the word. Amen. What is he saying? Use the word for wisdom and apply it in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we must be doers of the word, not just hearers. The word must be put into action. And we can only put the word into action when it becomes a revelation to us. You'll never be excited about anything yeah. unless it becomes a revelation to you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. So when we use the revealed word, now what is wisdom? We're answering the question, what is wisdom? This is wisdom. When we use the revealed word with understanding in our trials, in our place of testing, to solve every problem, that is wisdom. Amen. That is spiritual wisdom. Yeah. Now, Throughout the message, you'll find the prophet speak against wisdom. But he's talking about worldly wisdom. He is not talking about spiritual wisdom. So don't get it mixed up when you're reading the prophet's message and he's talking about wisdom. He's talking about people who have no revelation of the word. They're quoting according to their teachings. He's calling that wisdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. But the Bible is saying, the Apostle Paul is saying, I want you to have spiritual wisdom. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so every problem we can deduce from that, that every problem in our life requires wisdom. The problem, the, the solving, the thing, the solution for every problem is wisdom. Amen. Let's read 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Amen. First Kings chapter 3 verse 5. Here the Lord sets up Solomon as king. And the Lord, the Lord meets Solomon. Here you'll find. In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. How many of you want God to ask you what do you want? <laughs> Right now, if we could ask you, what do you want? Amen. Don't go carnal now. Yes. Learn from Solomon, Amen. wisest man. Watch what he asked for. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he had walked before thee in truth, and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit upon his throne as it is this day. <clears throat> and now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. 
So he's asking the Lord for wisdom here, right? <clears throat> that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. So when you're praying for a job, pray for wisdom. Amen. You're praying for anything in life, pray for wisdom. Amen. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked for riches for thyself. So don't keep going, Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. Nor hast thou asked the life of thine enemies, yes. but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Amen. Here's a blessing now. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Mm. Yes. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, Amen. so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall arise any, shall arise, shall any arise like unto thee. But I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. So what must we ask for? Wisdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. If we are seeking a job, if we have wisdom, wisdom will give us a solution. If we lack finances, wisdom will provide the answer for it. If we have a uh, sick in body, wisdom of the word will teach us how to apply the word by faith. Amen. The prophet says if you have need of healing, think on those scriptures that pertain to healing. If you have need of any other thing, he says, think on scriptures that pertain to that. So use the word as wisdom. People think all oh, the word is boring. The word has nuggets. The word is a solution. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. So in James 1 and 3 now. James 1 and 3. Amen. Let's read that James chapter 1 verse 3. Amen. I pray this is okay tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I know the devil is probably running to get plasters and band-aid and... Hallelujah. Amen. Because now we are training some soldiers here. Yes. Amen. And you know he's going to get a hiding. Praise the Lord. Verse 2. My brothers, count it all joy. What is joy? Joy is knowing the end result. Yes. Amen. Amen. Joy is knowing the end result. That's why you enjoy you can't be joyful if you're in worry and doubt and wondering what's going to be the end result. Amen. Joy is knowing the end result. Amen. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Amen. <laughs> if you're going through a trial and a situation and you can't see the end result, you're not going to be joyful. Yes. You're going to be in worry. Yes. But faith will make you see the expected end. Amen. How it's going to end up. And you will be joyful knowing that that's how you go. That's the place you're going to reach. Amen. So he's saying, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Here it is now. Amen. Here it is. Faith covered by the hearing of the word. Amen. But now when you receive that faith, God's going to try that faith yes. in order... To add a virtue. Yes. 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 Amen. That the trying of your faith worketh patience. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How are you going to get patience? The trying of your faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. But let patience. Now patience. Remember faith must be tried. When faith is tried it worketh patience. But if you, you got to remain in patience because patience has a work to do. Yes. Yes. If, we, if we step into impatience, 
faith can't do that work, the final work. Thank you, brother. Amen. God has a plan and a program. But all of these things are hidden mysteries that Satan can't understand how you are being built up into the image of Christ. You see why he wants to take away the revelation of your word so that you don't have faith. Because faith now when it's tried brings forth patience. But let patience have a perfect work. Be patient in your problem. Be patient in your trial. Endure. Because patience will lead you to what? That you may be perfect. Patience is going to make me perfect. Patience is going to lead me to spiritual maturity. And entire wanting nothing. I'm not going to be in lack. What does wanting nothing mean? I'm not going to be in lack. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. You see where he's going back to? You need wisdom. But if you lack wisdom, no problem. Let him ask of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How many of you want to ask God for wisdom? Amen. Amen. Lord, give me wisdom. Amen. How to handle my trial, my situation, my circumstance, oh God. My, my part in life. What I have to do in this life. What you've called me for. Lord, reveal your mind to me. Give me wisdom. Amen. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally. And abrade it not, and it shall be given him. So if you ask now, by faith, it shall be given you. Maybe you walked into the service unwise, but if you ask now, you walk out of the service a wise person, full of spiritual wisdom. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Don't waver now when you're asking. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. So every person must be tested. Every son of God must be tested. You must go to your place of trying. Amen. When God had taken Abraham, amen, and called him out, and he had to take him to his place of trying. Amen. The very promise that he told him you'll have a son. That was his place of trying. Because the son that he waited for for 25 years. Oh, yes. After many years now, he must sacrifice that son. Place of trying. Yes. What have you been praying for this job? For this something in your life? And then God tells you, sacrifice that thing. What are you going to do? Your dream job. Your dream car. Your dream house. Your dream whatever. And God says, sacrifice that thing. Can you trust God enough? To say, you know the plan for me, Jeremiah 29. You know the plan for me. So if you say sacrifices, I sacrifice it. Nothing wavering. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you must be tried. You will go through trials. You're, now, when you're going through trials, it's not you. Don't take it as a personal attack on you. It is not you that God is trying. It is your faith that God is trying. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So God is looking for a man of faith. Any man that comes to God must first believe. That he is and is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So God is looking for that faith in you. He's got to try that faith. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the person is not being tested. But the faith of the person is being tested. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. You know that. Amen. The word of God is true. That's what our Lord Jesus said. So when you keep on hearing the word, faith comes by the hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Amen. And now that faith has got to be tested. Amen. The faith that came from you hearing the word of God Amen. must be tested. Amen. Amen. Yes. So what happens if there's a message on the earth sent to a particular people and it, it's a word that's going to produce no ordinary faith. But a perfect faith and a rapturing faith. Amen. Do you think that faith must be tested? Yes. Amen. 
Search up cut and slice. Let's see if we can find something there. In the, in the message search. Amen. Uh, I know it's on page three or four in the church age book. Amen. But I don't know what paragraph it is. <clears throat> on your computer search there. If there's a revelation sent to the earth. Like no other. I'm talking about the word coming back down. Title deed given back to you. Revelation. Seven thunders. These seven thunders are the divinely revealed mystery truths. That are contained in the seals. And if that word is going to produce a perfect faith for the rapture. If that word is going to produce. Amen. Rapturing faith. Perfected faith. Amen. It must be tried. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you find it, we'll go back to it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Or you can maybe type up handle the word. That little group that can handle the word. That's what I want to get to. You know, he talks about the little group that can handle the word. Why is he using those words? Hallelujah. Amen. Cut and slice sounds like you're playing with toys. Or does it sound like you're in your place of trial? Cut and slice sounds like you're playing with toys? Or does it sound like you're on the battlefield? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So what is he saying? You will go to a test. But that faith will be tried. But then you'll have a perfect faith. Hallelujah. Satan don't know what to do with you. Satan is powerless before you. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you're studying the word of God, how many of you study the word of God, by the way? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You see, none of this will apply now if we're not studying the word of God. In order to draw from this, what I'm telling you tonight, we must be faithful stewards of the word. We must be students of the word. So when we are studying the word of God, the word is growing in you. Amen. And the enemy will come to test you, test that faith, tempt you, make you doubt what you are studying. Yes. Make you doubt what we've been preaching about. Yes. But your time and season, Amen. what God has called you to this hour. Yes. And you know what? It's your brothers and sisters in the message that will tell you, ah, we're not gods here on the earth. Yes. What are you talking about? Yes. I ask a question back to them. Where were you? Amen. When the sons of God Amen. shouted for joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because I was there. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So in the same way when you're studying the word now, the enemy is going to come to you and he's going to try and put doubt in reasoning. You mean to say that you're going to be able to operate like this? You mean to say you're a son of God? You're going to be an adopted son? A man with the ability to speak? A man who can operate Mark 11:23. A man, when he speaks, he don't doubt his own word, but he believes that word that is coming out of his mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. He shall receive what he ever asked for. Amen. You mean there's coming a people on the earth now who can speak? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. You mean there's a people like that? He's going to come and make you doubt that word. What is this? The prophet is saying the word is in the bride. You got nothing in you. When I look in you, I look and I see Netflix in you. I look and I see only movies in you. I look and I see only gaming in you. What are you talking about? The word is in the bride. Are you going to sit back and doubt that word? Or the enemy is going to say, look, what's happening to you? Like they came to Joe. Look at the place you are in, your place of trying. Amen. Look at the place of trying that you are in now. You mean to say God led you to this place? What is happening with you, Job? Mm. In your place of trial. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go to it, brother. Amen. I found it in two seconds. I'll help you. Fourth seal, paragraph 180. Amen. Praise the Lord. It says, we find out that he gets killed with the sword. Two, the sword of the word. God's word, sharp, two-edged sword, slays him, pulls him right down. 
Now, wait till them seven thunders utter their voices. Remembering the uttering of the seven thunders is coming to give you the revelation of the word. Amen. And faith covered by the hearing of the word. I'm driving this point Amen. again. This faith that is coming is a perfected faith. Amen. When you claim to hear the seven thunders, understand the revelations contained in the seals. It must produce in you a perfect faith. Can somebody say amen? amen. amen. Uttered their voice to that group who really can take the word of God and hand it there. Amen. It'll cut. It'll slice and cut. And they can close the heavens. Amen. They can shut this or do that. Glory. Whatever they want to do. Amen. Glory. Amen. Can you say glory? Amen. You'll be slain by the word of God that proceeds from his mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. He's telling you the same word of God that Jesus is going to slay the enemy finally. He's the same word of God that's in you. And it came by the seven thunders uttering Amen. their voices to you. Amen. But Satan wants to keep the revelation away from you by telling you the seven thunders is not revealed. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Place of trying. Yes. Amen. But cut and slice sounds like child's play. Yeah. Cut and slice. Amen. Shut the heavens. Oh, sounds like you're in a playground yeah. or does it sound like you're in warfare amen. it sounds like you're in the greatest battle ever fought amen yeah. satan coming to the mind you can't find satan in your mind right. hallelujah therefore you've got to put on the mind of christ amen. the mind of christ comes in like a force field over you yeah. to guard your mind mm. amen. hallelujah amen. praise the lord amen. hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So what is he coming to do? Distort that faith. Make you doubt. Contaminate your faith. Yes. You can't mix the word with faith now. Now you've got a contaminated faith. Now what's that word, brother Ramesh? That's in broken systems. Wiggle tails. Con contaminated. Amen. You like to hear the word of God, but you also like this other thing. Hallelujah. Some of us, amen. Hallelujah. I don't know if I should say this or not, but maybe I should say it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Some of us are like David. You got one wife, but you got 500 concubines. You say, not possible. You're full of pornography. Those are your concubines. Jesus said, if you're looking upon a woman to lust after her. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Can I get a brother say a strong amen? amen? Hallelujah. Some people feel like David. Amen. Hallelujah. One wife, but lots of concubines. Let's kill that devil. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Be assured the testing of your faith. Amen produces patience leading you to spiritual maturity Amen. and inner peace so studying the word of god remember when you study the word of god you're going to get faith and your faith must go through testing let's turn to hebrews chapter 12 verse 6 amen hallelujah praise the lord everybody still good amen. we still got some david's here amen. amen don't worry i'm going to give you a better context of david now because i don't want you to think of david in that way every time i ask you are you like david you're going to say no i want you to be like david Amen. Slay that giant. Slay that enemy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Turn to your brother. Say praise the Lord. Your sister, wherever you're sitting next to, say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now don't be upset and, and depressed there. Satan is going to come for you. Amen. He's going to try and walk through you. Here it is now, proving the point that every son now will be tested. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12. We're reading from verse 6. Amen. It says here. Okay. Devil's playing with my apple. For whom the Lord loved, he chasteneth. And scourged with every son whom he received. Now when his sons come into full adoption. In Luther's time. In Wesley's time. Uh, Azusa Street outpouring. Now, so will there be another chastening? 
Amen. Praise the Lord. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? For if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits Amen. and live? Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember, the test is not to make you fall. Satan's temptation is to make you fall from the faith. But God's test is to prove you as a son. Amen. 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 When you're going for a driver's license, they first put you through the theory part and give you, amen. What is it called? A learner's certificate. Amen. That you know the theory. But they must put you on the road. They must test you on the road. Amen. The test on the road is not to fail you. The test on the road is to make sure you, you can drive on the road. Because if they hand you a license without testing you to see if you can drive on the road, you can kill people. So the test is to check that you have reached that level where you can drive. And when you pass that test, they give you a driver's license. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So there's going to be a test to see if you're foot enough to be a son of a king. Amen. Oh, you've been preaching about sonship and authority. There will be a test to prove whether you are in sonship authority. There will be a test we are required to speak the word. Amen. Oh, come on, sons and daughters of God. Amen. There will be a test put to you, amen, to show your full potential, what the effects of the open book has had in my life, that I can now speak the word. Amen. Yes, you are in your place of trying right now. Yes, that's right. What will you do? Buckle under the pressure. Hallelujah. Look for mommy. Amen. Or are you going to stand up as a son and daughter of God Amen. and face your trial? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, anybody, now faith work with patience. Right? Faith work with patience. Anybody who has lost their patience loses the battle. The moment you lose patience, you lost the battle. Yes. Yes. Because what does patience do? Bring you to your perfect work. Bring you to sp spiritual maturity. Yes. Amen. So, anybody here loses patience? None of us. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, anybody? So, I know mothers lose their patience quite easily with the children. Children have the tendency to work on the mother's nerves. Praise the Lord. I know all your mothers have angelic children here. But you're going to learn. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> when I ask a question, it's not to condemn you. So if anybody has lost their patience in life, I want to see your hands. Because we're talking about this. Amen. Hallelujah. Very patient brothers here. Amen. They don't even lose patience here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so you've lost your patience so when the test and the trial was going on in your life and you lost your patience what happened instead of your thoughts being on the word of God your focus was taken away to focus on the problem and you didn't look to the source of all wisdom you didn't go to the spirit of wisdom and you focus on the situation, you focus on your child, you focus on that person, and you lost patience. So patience couldn't do their perfect work. So instead of you coming victorious out of that situation, you came out frustrated out of that situation. You came out defeated after that situation. And many times you had to put your tail between your legs and go back and apologize for that situation. Where you lost your patience. Right. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Now you have to go eat humble pie. Oh, I'm sorry brother. I didn't mean to do this. But if you remained in patience. Don't be quick to answer. A fool the Bible says. 
Don't answer a fool according to his folly, the Bible says. Hallelujah. So instead of your mind being fixed on the word of God, what are you looking at? What this person is doing to you. What this thing is doing to you. What this person is saying to you. What this one is doing. And what that one is doing. You spend your entire life in warfare, engaged in fleshly battles. And Satan is sitting back and laughing. Because you're losing your patience with everyone. Praise the Lord. So what happens? In impatience, you speak the wrong words. <laughs> now you are sons and daughters of God and your words carry power. When you are in impatience, you speak the wrong words. Even things you didn't want to confess with your mouth, you start confessing. You tell the child things you shouldn't say. You speak over them and you say things. You tell that friend of yours or that colleague of yours, you utter words or maybe even a stranger that, that's amen, come up against you and your anger and you're not in patience. You're not in control. And you speak words. Amen. Hallelujah. So what is that? Fear. You're not working in faith. You're working in fear. You are so fearful, amen, that you feel you need to control now. And the Lord is telling you, shut your mouth. And you say, no, Lord, I want to show them. I want to give them a piece of my mind. And the Lord is saying, stay still. Stay still. But no. Bush knife Bobby is back. Amen. You're not in patience. Hallelujah. So people lose battles when they lose patience. If you've lost battles in your life, it's because you don't remain in patience. Hallelujah. People who win battles are those who have overcome impatience. People who win battles are those who remain in patience. So, give you a very simple example. Somebody learning to play the keyboard. What does it require? A lot of practice and a lot of patience. Amen. You went out, you bought yourself an organ and you got yourself something, classes. Maybe you bought a guitar and the teacher told you, play the string now. And you're playing ting, 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 ting. Amen. But you've got to remain in patience because it's a process. How many of you picked up the guitar and you were skillful the first day? Amen. Praise the Lord. So you're playing till your fingers bleed. All day you're practicing this one thing. But if you continue in the faith, if you continue in patience, amen, if you do not quit, amen, you, and you start to grow in patience and you diligently keep practicing and you remain in patience and you keep practicing and you keep practicing you will reach your end goal and you will learn how to play the guitar or you learn how to play the keyboard people who have stopped learning to play an instrument or pursue anything in their lives are people who have gone into impatience if you took up something and you quit halfway it's because you remain in impatience Praise the Lord. Amen. I hope you can see the deeper thing here. Yes. If you don't attain perfect faith, it's because you were in impatience. What I'm trying to tell you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know all of you want me to quit now. Yes. <laughs> eh? You're saying, maybe this brother's going to go deeper now and ask me other questions. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now let's not be people who want me to close because you're not patient. <laughs> Remain in patience. Praise the Lord. Amen. I pray this is helping somebody tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. A marathon runner must remain in patience. I don't know why they want to run from Peter Marisburg to Durban. But they must remain in patience. Hallelujah. 
if they want to go. That is why Paul says, keep your eye on the prize. And didn't he say, the race is not to the swift. In the, I think it's in Proverbs. The race is not to the swift. Right? So you got to endure. Amen. You press on to the mark of the eye calling. Praise the Lord. So patience is going to lead you to spiritual maturity. Amen. Hallelujah. So how many times when you're believing the Lord and you're believing in the promise and the Lord said, don't open your mouth. You still want to open your mouth. The Lord says, give me praise and thanksgiving in the situation. But then you act in fear. And you speak doubt and negativity. The Lord says, remain in praise and thanksgiving. But, and remain, amen, in uh, using your mouth to bless my name. Hold your peace. But you screamed out in anxiety and worry and fear. And now, did that turn worry, fear, and anxiety turn into victory? No. Amen. So testing of faith produces patience, spiritual muscles called patience, spiritual muscles called endurance that brings you to spiritual maturity. How do you know if somebody is spiritually mature? How do you know if somebody is spiritually mature? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Say it louder, Brother Ramesh. Amen. So we are going to perform a spiritual maturity test tonight. Everybody take off your shoes. Brother Branham says, if you want to see if a person is dead, just kick him a little bit. Tramp his toes. Rub him the other way. Praise the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Somebody say the joy of the Lord. Is my, is my strength because your countenance now is changing amen because I'm dealing with spirits now and I don't get afraid of your angry face <laughs> amen because I can recognize spirits hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord so now amen what we're talking about how do we know a spiritually mature Christian? How much pressure he can take? How much force he can take? Amen. Hallelujah. How much of opposition he can take? In his place of trial, how much of tension, pressure, opposition can he take? And can he be in patience during this time? Can he remain in peace at this time? Amen. Hallelujah. How much of insults he can take in this time of unjust treatment? Amen. And we look to the champion of all champions, Jesus. They slapped him. He opened not his mouth. They spat on him. They opened up his, not his mouth. They put a crown on his head. He opened not his mouth. They hit him 39 stripes. He opened not his mouth. Did he remain in patience? They nailed him to that cross. Nailed his feet. Gave him some vinegar. If the groom did it, remained in patience for the victory, for the joy that was set before him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Tell your brother I'm so patient tonight. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, even ESCOM is having going into meltdowns here. Amen. Praise the Lord. So how much of test under the pressure, if he stands and remains victorious, then you know a spiritually mature Christian. Right? Hallelujah. You know a mother giving birth to a baby? Through all the pain, she remained in patience. If they told her go for 10 injections, she went for it because of patience. She knew what she was going to bring forth into the world. If they told her they're going to perform surgery on her, she remained in patience. Because of what was coming forth. How many of your mothers know what I'm talking about? Fathers don't know, they were standing outside there. Talking to their friends. Some of us had to stand inside. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Amen. I like you to be happy people. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Be happy. Mothers remained in patience because of the joy that was coming forth. And you know what? You ask a mother after birth, will you have a child? First, maybe a couple months, they tell you, yeah, never again. But they give her a few months, maybe a year, two years. She'll tell you, love, let's have another child. Why? The joy of bringing forth another child. Amen. She remains in patience. So we said temptation, the intention of temptation is to make you fall into a trap. Amen. But a test is that you should not fail. But that you should pass the test so that God can promote you to the next level. So exams and tests, trials that we face in this life are for taking us to the next level of glory. Amen. Amen. Every student goes through tests, exams, and those that get good marks are promoted to the next level. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what a test is for. So we've got to have a victor's mindset and not a victim mindset. Somebody say, I've got to have a victor's mindset. Amen. Oh, come on. Some of you need to speak these words. Amen. I need to have a victor's mindset and not a victim's mindset. I don't, now I don't want you to repeat all this, but I want you to understand what I'm saying. Forget about your past, where you came from, your circumstance, and stop having a victim's mindset. If you want, you've got all the reason to have a victim's mindset because the Bible says we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, came into the world speaking lies. Our first birth was cursed. So we can choose to have a victim's mindset and live under the curse or we can come under the victor's mindset and rise above the curse. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So when you're tested, you get patience. Patience, amen, should be, you should enjoy in patience. Patience should have a work in you. Because when a person stays in patience, does not give up, he is passing the test, amen. He will not only meet, amen, the end result, but he will be perfected. Read that scripture again. Patience will lead you to perfection. Amen. We've remained patient for how long now? Patience is leading us to our perfection. Amen. Thank your test you. is not to kill you. Your test is to improve you. Your test is to bring you to perfection. To show that you are not a weak son. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the, the one who remains in patience is the one who remains on course. The one who is steady. Amen. Amen. The one who can enjoy extreme pressure. Amen. The one who can remain in love. Amen. That's what I was going to say. That a mother, because of love, she goes through all of that. Yeah. Because of love. And what does the Bible say there in James? You will lack nothing. If you have spiritual wisdom, you will lack nothing. Because what are finances if you've got wisdom? Then you'll know how to operate with finances. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any area in your life, if you've got spiritual wisdom, why do you think Paul, talking to the most mature church, he's saying, I, I think of you day and night. I have not ceased to pray for you. But when I'm praying for you, I'm asking for the Lord to give you the spirit of wisdom. Did David ask for it? Did Daniel ask for it? We read Daniel chapter 2 there. Amen. So lacking in nothing. You're lacking in nothing. Tell somebody I'm lacking in nothing. I, I can't believe that we'll be sitting here tonight to say that we are lacking in the word. I can't believe that after the message of the hour has come, Revelation 10, 7 has come, Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6 has sounded, amen, that we can lack anything. The word is our source. We are lacking nothing. Hallelujah. I'm expecting a better amen than that. You are lacking nothing. Lacking in nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. You are taking the test. You are passing the test. Your faith is being tried. You are Amen. passing that test. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So what's happening now? I'm just talking about healing very quickly before we close now. Healing, 
You are saying, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. I am completely healed. And even though you are saying it for one week, two weeks, three weeks, one month, two years, three years. Your situation is getting more worse. You are getting weaker. But you are confessing, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. What's happening? When you keep remaining in faith, hallelujah, you are not looking to the symptoms. Yeah. Looking to the symptoms will move you to impatience. Right. Oh, yes. Looking to the symptoms yes. will take your prescription off of Dr. Jesus and make you go to Dr. Govansami. Because you feel Dr. Govansami probably can help you more than Dr. Jesus. But I want you to know Dr. Jesus is the great physician. Hallelujah. There is not a disease that he can't handle and cure and heal. So I'm talking about healing. One week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five years, whatever it is. Don't look at the symptoms. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't look at the symptoms are increasing and increasing. You speak the word by faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Your health may be getting weaker during this time. During this time, really now. It's got to take a lot of faith for that person to remain in patience. Yeah. Yes. Unless you go through it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yes. Amen. 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 It's easy on the outside when you're not going through that situation to tell the other person. But the person that's in that situation needs to remain in patience. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And keep confessing the word of God. Yes. If you say this is not working, you are getting into impatience. Yes. Hallelujah. Everything is going against me. Come on, get back in line. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. yes. Stay in line. Yes. Get back to the word. Believe. Thank you, Jesus, that by your stripes I am healed. Amen. What happened if John Ryan had moved into impatience? You know, things, situations can lead you to impatience. People laughing at you. People scoffing at you. They tell you, hey, that's a condition that cannot be cured. Why don't you just accept the condition? Can put you in impatience. But faith is opening up the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. Faith is opening up the windows of heaven and praising God. Amen. You may have stripes on your back. You may be a spit on your face. You may have people laughing at you. Amen. But you're opening up your windows. Amen. Opening up the window to heaven and you are praising God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Saying, yes, Lord, your anointing has healed me. Your word has healed me. I may be sick in my body right now. And amen, my faith, amen, is rising. My body may be decreasing and getting weaker. But my faith is rising. My help is rising. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My faith is remaining in patience. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Now, we'll close with this. What is the meaning of patience? Patience. He's having the same attitude despite this change of situation. Amen. Having the same attitude. Remember the right mental attitude yes. to any promise of the word? Yes. Amen. I don't have time to read all of these quotes, but you know these quotes very well. You've been in the message long enough. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Right mental attitude. Despite, so patience meaning the same attitude despite the change of situation or people's comment. So, get your attitude back. Mm. Have an attitude adjustment. Yeah. <coughs> Raise your hand now. Amen. Amen. Say, Lord, Lord. I change my attitude. Change my attitude. Give, me Give me an attitude adjustment, Lord. Attitude. To remain in patience. Remain in patience. So that patience can have its perfect work in me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Change your attitude. The person who is patient, his eyes are fixed on the promise of God's word. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Everything was done to Jesus, but Jesus remained focused on the word. Amen. What his father's will was. He was fixed on the father's will. 
He went to the cross because he was fixed on the Father's will. And you were the Father's will. The moment you turn your focus from God, you're moving into impatience. But you've got to train yourself to focus. Train yourself to focus. Amen. Believe on the word of God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says if you lack wisdom, ask of the Lord. Your faith is being tested. Your patience is working, amen, working perfection in you.